I have set this year up to be the biggest of any year on my channel. We are gonna do some damage. And if you think my last projects were good, you ain't seen nothing yet. Yes, you heard that right. Freddy Hernandez, or as most of you might know him, Tavarish, has built one of the most influential car channels on YouTube, all from his garage. The best part is that it was all planned, and today I'm gonna show you how he did it. In just a few years, he was able to crack the code to growing a successful YouTube channel, and with that came millions of dollars and millions of subscribers. He's even figured out how to end up on YouTube's trending page. You see, Tavares started blowing up on YouTube a few years ago, but what makes it more fascinating is the reasons for his success are actually quite simple. Although it might be hard to figure out from the untrained eye, if you actually know what you're looking for, it's quite a genius strategy. I'm sure at first glance, most of you don't see it, but there's something there that's making his videos get tens of millions of views. So what could Tavares have possibly discovered that could lead to this kind of insane growth in revenue? Well, I decided to do some digging into his past, and it shouldn't surprise you that this guy is a lot smarter than he seems. In fact, Tavares has pretty much discovered the manual for how to grow a YouTube channel. Crazy enough, it's the same manual that almost all successful YouTubers use. In today's video, we're going to break down the Tavares success story and figure out how he went from being a broke immigrant from Russia to absolutely dominating the YouTube car niche and making millions of dollars at the same time. This way, hopefully, we can apply what we've learned to this channel. Not only that, but I will also be pointing out any entrepreneurial traits or YouTube strategies that we see Tavares implement throughout the breakdown of the story. And trust me, there's quite a lot. So if you're interested in cracking the YouTube algorithm or becoming a self-made entrepreneur yourself, then make sure to have a pencil ready as we dive into his story. Freddy Hernandez, also known as Tavares, was born in Russia, and at the time, it was still a part of the Soviet Union. His family quickly moved to New Jersey after Tavares was born. It just so happened to be perfect timing, too, because the collapse of the Soviet Union happened immediately after. Initially, Tavares' family was in poverty, but they didn't let that stop them from building a life. Over the years, they were able to buy a home and put Tavares through school. They were by no means upper class, but they were able to live comfortably. After graduating high school in 2004, two years later, he created his YouTube channel. Coming from a Russian family, he named the channel after the Russian word for comrade or friend known as Tavares. He would go on to post his first video a few months later about his 1998 Nissan Maxima. This is my car trying to start. That would be the only video on his channel for the next nine years. Now, during that time, he spent most of it working on his cars, and it became quite a hobby for him. Granted, this was when he wasn't working at his part-time job. He used whatever money he made from work to work on his cars. Now, he got really good at modifying his Nissan Maxima and became a full-blown car enthusiast. He wasn't your typical car enthusiast, though. I feel like when I say car enthusiast, most people are going to think, oh, maybe he can change the rims and he tints his headlights. No, when I I mean by full-blown car enthusiast, I mean he was literally swapping engines in his driveway, like some sort of mad scientist, something that even most adults can't do. Tavares was different, and he was smarter than most kids. What Tavares could do that might come to a surprise is that he could also write. While he worked on his cars, he would also post his projects on the Nissan Maxima car forums, and he built quite the reputation. In 2011, Tavares started his own website called Apita Online, which he used to post his knowledge on cars. Around the same time, Time, he also became the vice president of a scooter company he started with his friend in New York City. Now, besides posting on his website, he would also post on Facebook and oftentimes in a popular car forum called Jalopnik. In 2014, he was actually able to land a job at Jalopnik as a contributing writer, which is quite impressive. Notice how confident Tavares is in the goals he sets for himself. Even from an early age, when he told himself, I want to do this or I can build this, no matter how hard or challenging that might be, he would get it done and he would do it. It comes from from being able to solve problems. Like me, I'm in my happiest spot when I can solve a bunch of issues that I never knew existed. He taught himself how to swap car engines, how to modify cars, and now he landed the job of his choice where most people would probably fail or not even have the confidence to apply. Remember, confidence comes naturally with success, but success comes only to those who are confident. Through his job at Jalopnik, he was able to meet some pretty impressive people within the automotive industry, and this inspired him to get back on YouTube, maybe as a way to show off or maybe out of inspiration. For the next year, he continued to post videos. These pretty much consisted of a carpool-style interview 
with the people that he met that had a pretty impactful influence on the automotive space. Unfortunately, those videos really didn't do all that well. After a few years working both as a VP for the scooter place and at his journalist job, he was able to save up enough money with his wife to buy a home in Florida because there was lower property taxes and less restrictions on cars. Oh, and also he got a two-car garage. From there, with his garage, he pivoted to posting videos about different project cars he had purchased, and by the end of 2017, he had gained over 130,000 subscribers. By 2019, his subscribers had grown to over 800,000, and now he has over two and a quarter million. So what did Tafarish figure out? What did he do differently that caused his success, and how exactly did it make him millions? As we know, there are thousands of car channels on YouTube, but most of them haven't come anywhere close to Tavarish's success. Remember what I said earlier, Tavarish is smarter than most people. He has a different view on life and is really good at picking up on what works in business. Keeping this in mind, when he started taking YouTube more seriously, you can kind of pick up on how he thought. You can almost see the blueprint he used. Quickly, he realized when he titled his videos with I bought, they would rank better on the YouTube algorithm. From there, he dabbled with more keywords and realized when he started his videos with verbs, they would rank better than others without. He realized YouTube was just one big puzzle that he could solve, and he did just that. He immediately made the switch and started titling most of his videos with fixing, trying, changing, and so on. He would also continue to use the keyword I bought and similar phrases like I modified and I fixed. Keeping with this trend, his channel continued to grow. What Tavarish did was he made his titles inclusive. Notice he stopped writing titles that would limit the video's potential to appear to a large audience. Throughout the years, you can see how he continued to use these keywords in almost all of his videos. For those wanting to start a channel, it's important to remember that some 86% of YouTube viewers say they regularly turn to the platform to learn something new. That's why Tavarish's videos, where he explains something or is advising his viewers how to do it, seem to gain the most attention on YouTube more than all the other videos he's posted. Remember this if you plan to start a channel, and keep it in mind when you look at other successful YouTubers. Not only did Tavarish figure out what makes the algorithm tick, he also continued to upgrade his builds from cheaper older cars to more expensive and popular ones, which inevitably helped in the development and growth of his audience. He's added multiple Lamborghinis, he's outgrown his garage, and now works out of his own shop, and lastly, he may have even purchased the salvage McLaren P1, which will obviously explode his channel tenfold if he decides to rebuild it on YouTube. Lastly, if you really want to see how he cracked the algorithm plain and simple, then check out his popular videos page and notice how many times he uses the word bought or I bought, you can see how often it appears. What's interesting is this method of using verbs doesn't just apply to car channels. It's pretty much every niche on YouTube, whether it's food, entertainment, vlogging, fitness, you name it. What you need to learn is the quicker you make the switch from posting random titles to including verbs, the quicker one of your videos will crack the algorithm or get picked up in the system. This method is still used today by massive YouTubers, and it is also constantly turning channels that were once slow into trending ones today. All in all, the things that Tavarish has been able to accomplish in just a few years is absolutely incredible. But what I really want to do is break down all of his revenue streams since cracking the algorithm. Typically, what comes with a large audience or following is money. Over the years, he has created a profitable YouTube channel that gets paid through ad revenue, and he also gets lots of sponsors. Using a YouTube revenue calculator like Social Blade, it can give us a pretty good estimate on how much he is earning. Now, Social Blade can be really accurate if you know how to use it or have the correct information to make it work. Now, if we use my channel for reference, you can see my channel CPM is around $7.50. And I'd like to categorize my channel currently in the car niche, so I think it's pretty accurate to use for this equation. Using about $7.50, we can see that the Tavares channel just off YouTube revenue alone is bringing in around $475,000 a year. Just remember, YouTube keeps 45% of that, so his ad revenue is probably closer to $260,000 a year. Now, if you do the math, since his channel brought in in total 376 million views, that comes out to about $2.8 million overall, minus YouTube's cut, which is closer to about $1.5 million. But no one knows for sure unless he decides to reveal his earnings. Moving on to his sponsors, if we check out the video I made on DDE, you can see Damon mentioned that he gets paid around $25,000 to accept a sponsor. I did an electric toothbrush offer. Yeah. I did six figures. I charged $25,000 for that. And because they have a similar audience and subscriber count, I'd likely think it's a good reference to what Tavares can bring in. I mean, he's even said without the help from his sponsor, he wouldn't have been able to buy a Lamborghini Murcielago. I'm also gonna take some time to introduce and thank today's sponsor, Autotempest.com, because without them, 
I would not have bought this car. So I'd likely think he's brought in about 25,000, if not more on average per sponsor. And he also gets a lot of sponsors. Now, if you wanna watch my video on how Damon and Dave from DDE became millionaires, then make sure to click the link in the description right here. Overall, in regards to Devarish's income coming in from sponsors and from YouTube ad revenue, he's bringing in well over six figures. But in regards to his net worth, then that is easily a few million dollars. His cars alone from his builds have an appraisal total total of over $1.7 million, and we're not even including all the tools, real estate, and brands he's built. That alone could be worth a good chunk of change. It's so often that I see a pattern in successful entrepreneurs, and Tavarish is the perfect example. Even though Tavarish is gifted in the way that he thinks, we can use what he's learned to our advantage. Unfortunately though, this is the end of the story for now, but I know there's a lot we'll see from Tavarish. With that being said, make sure to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already, and if you want to see the video about how rebuilding supercars made daily driven exotics millionaires, then make sure to check the video out here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.